Hey everyone, and welcome back to Remember This Tech. You see behind me? It's a blast from the past. A bit of nostalgia I got my hands on. Yep, it's the Mac. Mac Tower G5. It has two separate CPUs in there. They didn't have them combined on one die. And it came with two gig of RAM. Didn't have a hard drive, so part of this video is me giving a tour back in time to check out this old G5 tower. And the second part of the video is me trying to get it back up and running. Maybe there's problems with it, who knows. But I paid $100 for this. It says it posts to BIOS and that's all I know. Except for the system specs. The date of this production was 2005. Let's get right into it and let's check out some of the system specs and I'll show you around the case. Let's start the tour. Come on, let's go. So. If we take a look at the back of the case here, we see it's all brushed aluminum and that was one of the selling points of this back in the day. Uh, we've got optical in and out, which is pretty rare to be built into a system back in the day. Looks like audio jacks here and or Bluetooth maybe, I don't know. USB, firewire, looks like a modem and then an ethernet. Here's your power uh, connection. Here's your fan ports, exhaust or intake, I'm not sure. And then your graphics output here, DVI. Here, this is the lever that opens the side of the metal case here. Let me flip this around really quick to show you a little bit more. This is technically the front of the case. You have power button, audio port for headphones. USB and a firewire port and this is the Apple Power Mac G5 and it has a dual 2 gigahertz processors and it can support more than 2 gig of RAM that it came with no hard drive it has an optical drive still in here I took a peek in here and hopefully it will work and that's what we're gonna check out it says cosmetic wear because there are scratches all over the case here the aluminums they're they're just surface scratches you see, which sucks because it's really a cool Apple case, but it is heavy as hell. It's like 50 pounds to open it, flip this lever, right? And then the side of the case comes off like this. It has instructions about how to remove the fans and stuff. Let's turn it around for you to see. You have this clear plexiglass. This right here comes right off and it's maximizing airflow is what this is doing, directing the channeling the air. This hasn't been cleaned whatsoever. And it hasn't even been powered on. I haven't even tried that, so could be a plethora of problems. You can see inside here, when you have two of these covers like this, that means that you have two processors. These fans come right out with the slide case here. And they plug into that one plug right there. And by removing this, you can get into the system RAM for the board. There's four slots populated. And if it's two gig of RAM, that means probably 512 meg modules. And then there's four more. Um, each one has two more slots left, so there's four in total. And I'll put the system specs up here. Uh, you can check out this all the system specs what it came in back in the day. And this has two separate processors, like I said. And um, up here is the optical drive. And this is where your hard drives go up in here. And you can see there's nothing there where you can fit two drives up here. And there's two SATA connectors, so SATA is good. And uh, I'm gonna try to put an SSD in there. Originally, the specs down here is two gigahertz, 512 meg of RAM. It's DDR400, I think. And it looks like it came with a 160 gig hard drive. And it came with a GS520 video card. I think that's a GeForce. Let's pause it and I'll pull the card out real quick. So the video card is a A146 NVIDIA. It is a 
GeForce 5200 with 64 meg of RAM and it's AGP interface. That is not going to win any gaming awards, but that's what it came with. It looks decent and in shape, so we're gonna put that back in. It's got a passive heat sink too. Tells you it doesn't put out a ton of heat, but let's put it back in and uh, clean the case up. The next step is to throw in a SSD. I got an old Samsung 830, 128 gig SSD that I wasn't using. Would I like to have a larger drive? Yes. Uh, there's two uh, CETA ports in there with connections for power, so I could throw one in for later. The second step is once that's installed, we'll see if it uh, post recognizes the drive, and if it does, I'll have this USB stick that I put Mac OS X Leopard on, and hopefully we can restore this to the drive. Let's get going, shall we? Let's hook it up. So we got the SSD in place, uh, power cable on, Windows keyboard here. Let me zoom in the camera here. I had to use the Windows keyboard because I don't have a Mac keyboard, so I did the equivalent for Command Option, which is Windows Alt OF. And I got into the Mac, Apple Power Mac 735 boot ROM. Apparently once you're in the open firmware, you're gonna to have to type in some commands, which I had to look up a few. The first one is Dev Elias. All one word, D-E-V-A-L-I-A-S. That'll give you a list of all the devices on the system. Boot from the USB, and I see the different USB ports, but I just don't know if it's USB 2B or 2C or USB 3. So I typed in this command. Let's see if it even works. So that's not working. I can't seem to get the G5 Max system to boot from the USB drive. Um, I just don't have technical knowledge. But if maybe someone knows how to do that or has some tips from personal experience, give me a comment down below and let me know. So the next step is I tried to boot from the super drive. It wouldn't detect the disc or it couldn't boot from the disc. So I'm thinking, well, it's really old, maybe uh, 17 years old, maybe the super drive's dead. So the next step I'm gonna do is take the super drive out, put in a DVD multi drive that I have, connect it up to the SATA system, see if I can boot from the new drive. Maybe the multi, maybe the super drive's dead. And I burned a new uh, Leopard on a dual air disc on my MacBook and hopefully it will boot from that on the new drive. So that's what we're going to do next. So look, come on, wish me luck, let's try this. So apparently get the super drive out here. There's these two clips here. Just slide them over and it should move the drive forward just a little bit and I just kind of was able to nudge it out with a little screwdriver and the drive comes loose and then if I slide it well, this thing's rusty and dirty I don't think there's enough room for the cable oh no it's a freaking uh, IDE oh crap anyways there's not much cable in here the cable gently the IDE cable is glued to the top of the super drive how stupid Got it. They literally like glued the ribbon cable to the top of the drive. How big of an idiot move is that, Apple? I understand you don't want stuff moving, but come on. This is the adapter. IDE goes into here. goes right into the back of your new drive. Hopefully it detects it and hopefully it works. And put it upside down like this. Now I have to get a box or something to put up here. And there you have it, the boxes. Well, there's no more cable length 
and I got to use the adapter. I know this reads dual layers, so let me power this system on. Eject the drive, put in the Mac OS. I'm going to try a few other things on this Mac G5 tower that don't work, doesn't work. It's another test for this Mac G5. I took this, put this in an external dock, um, USB, flashed it with uh, 10.4 Tiger and with Belena Etcher. So I'm gonna put it in this Mac, hook it up, see if it'll boot. Not having high hopes on this. Fingers crossed, let's give it a shot. Booting up. Let's see, yeah, well, the only way I know what to do is to try. I did this with a uh, Linux before. Oh shit. I did this with Linux before and it actually worked with Belena Etcher on an external drive. And uh, you gotta be kidding me. Is it going to work? Oh, snap! <laughs> oh my gosh. Ooh, hold on. So I'm gonna go ahead with this, see if we can get it to install 10.4. I don't know if the mouse works. So, uh, install Mac OS X, click, yes. Oh, the mouse does work, it's just really slow. And, continue. I agree, thank you. Destination, it might, I might need a secondary drive on this case because I have it flashed onto an SSD. So I'm going to need another blank one to install to because I can't see anything. So that could be an issue. But let me back and I'm gonna have to cancel out of here really quick. Maybe I can go to utilities. Look, utilities works. This utility, what I'll do is quit this installer and then we're going to install this secondary drive ssd in the other bay and see if it'll work okay i got the other ssd installed in the secondary drive bay and hopefully it'll boot from and i can install into the new one so this is a good sign it's coming into the installer which is excellent fingers crossed hopefully it sees the secondary drive that i just installed if it does I can possibly install to it. Does not see a drive. Might have to format the drive with the disk utility. Let's try to go up here in utilities, disk utility. So it sees the XR, great. Okay, we're going to erase that and we are going to do extended journal, I think. And then we'll call this, it's 10.4. And then erase, and then do it. And then hopefully, it looks like it's ready. So let's go back to the install maybe. Let me close this. So right now, that worked, it sees a disk now. I can select a disk that I can install it. The problem was I didn't format it in, in a format that Mac OS X could see or use. Select it, continue, click install to perform basic installation of the software package on Mac OS Tiger 104. I just put 104 because I didn't want to put a dot period in there just in case. And fingers crossed everyone. It looks like it might be working. Let's go on SSD to SSD, so it's probably the fastest you can even install this. So I might have come up with a new way. Screw your DVD drive if it doesn't work. Screw your USB flash drive if they don't work. Bypass the, the uh, boot ROM loader. Amazing. I might have gotten it to work, still fingers crossed. Hell yeah. And it's still going. It's really, it doesn't take much time at all. 
it's just screaming along. And I think it probably needs, well, this is 10.4 uh, Tiger. I, if it gets in, boots up to the desktop, then uh, good to go. So just a tip, if you tried everything, if you don't have a DVD-ROM drive that works or a spare for these systems, if you can't get it to boot from USB, you know, you made an image, whatever, 10.4, 10.5, whatever, Leopard, take a spare SSD enough to fit the image. Put it in an external USB dock, connect it to your PC, Windows PC, or whatever you have. Use Belana Etcher. Take your image for Mac 10.4, OS or 10.5 for this G5, flash it to the destination of your external SSD drive. Then go ahead and yank that out, put in a secondary drive, an SSD in here, and the primary one you just flashed. Boot up off the primary one, go into the disk utility like I showed you, format the drive that you want to install to the, the secondary drive so that the system can see it and then when it'll show up go back into the installer you don't have to exit out or nothing just come close out your disk utility and it'll be in the background and it'll come forward and it'll continue to install and it'll see the drive now click and go through the install process and then you go then you get good to go and it might be one of the fastest ways to do this yeah screw your dvd screw your usb thing doesn't work anyways or at least for me it didn't so fingers crossed we still got to get to the uh, desktop if I didn't pull out the drive will it boot from it I might have to remove it or else it might go into an install loop so let's see what happens I think it went into an install kind of loop here I didn't pull the other drive for the install so I'm probably gonna have to shut it off uh, shut the machine off and then pull the first image SSD out and then boot from there. Or maybe I don't need to. Check this out. It's even got sound drivers. Because it's a Windows keyboard. Um, I do own a Mac, but I'm not going to transfer my information. Got my keyboard set up. US keyboard. Continue. I just plugged in the Ethernet. Eh, just plugged in the Ethernet. Now, will it mm, work? Time and date. This is not correct. Battery must be shot. I'm gonna have to get a battery probably. Going to the desktop? Oh snap. Wow, look, it sees the install. Now I can install 10.5 if I want. It's right here. Why didn't you work before? Who knows? Why? I don't know. Let's use both drives, so. New software. It already has an operating update. Hmm, how nice. We'll do these updates be right back. Most of the things are similar if you've used the Mac before. Here. Here you have your finder, your dashboard, your mail. Here's Safari, it's probably so old it won't work though. Um, chat, address book, iTunes, calendar. Here's QuickTime. System preferences I have open here. And software update. I'm doing updates now for a couple things, which is Java and a Mac OS, 8, OS X update combined, uh, bringing me up to 10.4.1.1. Um, 
but that's, you know, I can go up to 10.5 on this with the Leopard, so we'll do that later. And if you have System Preferences open, you can take a look at your system and what's in your machine. Displays, what they're set at, not a lot, but so let's install and restart and let it install. Install the new update. We've got Mac OS X updated to 4.10.411. Excellent, and uh, some of the basic applications that are in here are Apple Script, Chess, DVD Player, Calendar, Sync for syncing up and backing up, and this is some preferences. So, and here we just have hardware, software update. I don't think there's anything left to get. But, I mean, all the apps are out of date because it hasn't been touched in 15 years, but... Oh wow, there's a bunch on here. Security updates, 2009. We can install these. I almost gave up with this system. I almost quit on it considered it a hundred dollar loss because I paid a hundred dollars for the system on eBay but I was determined to give it a shot give myself credit for that but it's a dual core two gigahertz uh, g5 system the biggest upgrade I did was probably putting an SSD in there and you know installing the OS to it yes got it and now I'm gonna do some testing functionality see if we can get a up-to-date browser see if we can connect to the web do some basic tests you know let's get these installed Disks here, network is on here, internet's working. Let's try Safari. Thing is so old, it's probably not going to work. It's kind of rendering the Apple website, kind of. Not really, but the the browser's really out of date, so. Will YouTube work? No, it hates it. It hates it. Sure has a lot of crap that I can't do. Opera is pretty good if we can get it to work for the Mac. And then I'll have more up-to-date extensions, hopefully. Maybe it'll work. Not working. Opera should work. It's not working. Well, we'll work on that and we'll be right back. Something to note is that it did pull down applicable updates from Apple uh, for this software OS version. Pulled down a bunch. Granted, you know, Safari is not going to be new, up to date, etc. So, under preferences. These items are shown on the desktop, hard disk, CD, DVD, ROMs, any servers, and then you can show how the different uh, spring-loaded folders and windows are. Here's labels, sideboards, sideboards, you can customize it a little bit for your sideboard and what you want and what you don't want. 240 gig drive after it was formatted, etc. So it's 218 available left and 5.27 gig used of space. And that means that most of that is just system operating system and updates. I put that on the um, Lexar uh, SATA drive and it's pretty snappy. So far so good. You can set up your desktop and your screensaver and how you want the background to look. It's got some basic stuff here. That looks horrible. I'll leave it like that. Screensavers for old school CRT monitors. What else can we do? We've got some security functions here. Energy saver if you want to set up your profiles. This. Here's a dashboard, here's a dashboard. You can kind of configure what you want for your little widgets. So I got 10.5 Leopard installed and the 
uh, secondary SSD drive and put it in the G5 tower and we're gonna see if it picks it up on boot and maybe I can update from there. Maybe I can't. I think it's booting into the OS though. Uh, I don't know how I'm gonna update this system. It says to use the application. Oh, so have to use the application set up for the disk. And I clicked on it and let's see if this will let me upgrade to 10.5. Select the destination you want to install to and we want to put it on this 223 gig Lexar SSD. The upgrade, upgrade. Put in your password. Let's see if it uh, upgrades to, uh, that's it? Come on, Are you kidding me? Still says 10.4.11. Now I wonder what will happen if I reboot um, the system. Hmm, is that a failed install? Maybe. Well, I'm gonna reboot and see what happens. Let's see if it uh, does anything on the restart or if it does nothing. Looks like it's going to the desktop. Still 10.4.11, so I guess that's gonna to have to do for now. Still didn't work. That's about all I got left for the Mac. I mean, there's updates, but not much else, you know? None of the browsers I downloaded worked, and I don't know what else to try. The Geekbench didn't work. Libre Wolf didn't work. 104 Fox didn't work. Opera didn't work. Can't update for whatever reason to uh, Mac. It keeps pulling down Java updates, which is interesting. I mean, it means there's still some support, but you're gonna reach a, like a plateau as far as how far you can go and you know what versions you can get up to, I suppose. I'll try to put a new version of Linux on here. Um, Debian Linux, or maybe a Ubuntu. See what I can get running on here. Uh, something with a lot more support, newer browsers. So stay tuned for, and I hope you enjoyed revisiting this Mac G5. I know we didn't get into a lot of the software or the functionality. You know, it took a while just to get the operating system to install. And rest assured, I'm gonna play around with this in the future and try to get Leopard 10.5 installed and maybe get some benchmarks to run for y'all. Thanks for watching. Remember this tech.